Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to try to answer the question of the galaxy rotations, because recent research may have found a way for us to finally explain why certain galaxies spin certain way. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So if you were to look into the night skies and try to find a bunch of galaxies, you might see something like this, and it might actually look somewhat hectic in the way that galaxies seem to be spinning. You're not going to see actual spin because it happens on very very long timescales, you're more likely to see something like this, but you can sort of imply the direction and of course the actual plane of the galactic spin. And this is something that scientists can easily measure, but we didn't really know how to explain why certain galaxies spin this way, certain galaxies spin that way, and some other galaxies spin in a completely different direction. But as we started to get more and more data from various really advanced projects, and more specifically for this study they used one from Australia called Astro 3D. You can check out the website um, in the description below and essentially it's the project that allows us to create a very realistic and somewhat um, precise map of the 3D map of the nearby space. And so the scientists behind the study you can find in the description below did just that. They looked at various galaxies out there and started to see a very unusual pattern. A pattern that somewhat relates to one of the previous videos I made on the channel where I talked about the connection of everything in the universe. Now in that video I mentioned that we've discovered certain unusual parameters of very bright galaxies known as quasars. You know it's those big, really massive and really bright objects that are visible from everywhere in the universe. And so quasars seem to have a pattern of alignment when it comes to their arrangement in the universe, and we've discovered this about 5 years ago. And it might be not instantly apparent, but a lot of these quasars are aligned in a very certain way along these invisible filaments. And these filaments are almost like the roadways inside the universe that um, stretch across millions and millions of light years, with some being relatively short in terms of cosmic terms, um, roughly around 20 million light years, and some being some of the biggest structures out there, up to 500 or so million light years in length. And I've mentioned this previously, but if you'd like to explore a simulation of these filaments, check out the website known as the Illustris Project that allows you to see the filaments and how they form uh, by exploring a virtual universe that was created by the project. And so here, if we were to actually zoom out a little bit, you'll start seeing these filaments across the universe with galaxies embedded in them. And these are normally composed of a lot of dark matter, but also a lot of gas, tremendous amounts of gas, more gas than there is in the actual galaxies. And it just so happens that the recent research looked at those filaments once again and discovered that there's another pattern. There's a pattern between the rotation of galaxies, their mass, and their relation to the filaments. So the scientists behind this paper looked at over 1400 different galaxies out there and they created this um, somewhat uh, easy to visualize map with the filaments being visible as well. And according to their calculations, the pattern seems to differ between the large galaxies and the small galaxies. So for the small galaxies, such as our neighbor Large Magellanic Cloud, their alignment seems to be basically along with the filament. In other words, they seem to be spinning along the filament in the relatively similar direction. Now these distances here are exaggerated because these galaxies are way too close to each other, but it sort of looks like this. So uh, if the filament goes this way vertically, then the small galaxies will be spinning along the filament. However, the larger galaxies, even those larger than the Milky Way, and here for a comparison I use the much larger version of the Andromeda galaxy, the spin will be orthogonal or essentially 90 degrees. It's going to be perpendicular to the plane of other galaxies, smaller galaxies, and perpendicular to the actual galactic filaments. And what's interesting is that this pattern seems to repeat itself across those 1400 galaxies that they investigated. Which also of course suggests that all of these galaxies are traveling across the filament, but 
are using it more like actual highways. They're moving in the same direction and the filament seems to force them to do it in a certain way. So for larger, more massive galaxies, specifically the spiral galaxies, their direction is perpendicular and they're forced to move that way. Whereas the smaller galaxies are moving um, with the filament and are rotating along with the filament creating what seems to be almost like a tube-like formation. But we definitely need to look at this a little bit more and study a lot more galaxies before we can actually find a way to describe this in a little bit more detail. For now, it's just the first such study, so we need more investigation. But it does definitely connect all of these galaxies with filament once again. And one of the potential explanations comes from the simulation by Gregory Poole that shows how smaller galaxies eventually form into larger galaxies and how their spin eventually stabilizes and becomes essentially perpendicular. So as these smaller galaxies slowly come closer and closer together and combine into a larger, more massive galaxy, eventually they will probably acquire a spin that's more perpendicular and that will create the galaxies that we're observing. At the same time, uh, there seems to be no connection between medium-sized galaxies like the Milky Way and the uh, galactic spin or the direction of spin. So this only seems to apply to either really small galaxies or really large ones. We don't really know anything about where the Milky Way and the Andromeda are pointing just yet and where the actual filament here is. Mostly because it's very difficult to look at these objects from within, from the inside. This is why we can't really see, for example, the far side of our galaxy. It's much easier for us to look out and see these distant galaxies out there and try to analyze what's happening there instead. And through discoveries around these other galaxies, we can then try to apply similar uh, explanations to what's happening around our own. Now, finding the filament uh, that connects the Milky Way would actually be quite groundbreaking. For now, we can only see very minor signs connecting the Andromeda and the Milky Way, mostly through gas and various stars in between. But nevertheless, this discovery does explain quite a lot about the rotations that we are observing. It also implies that the galactic filament literally directs the galactic motion and, of course, their rotation as well. While at the same time, simulations like this also kind of help us explain how such massive galaxies can relatively quickly form these unusual disk-like shapes. Basically, by having galaxies collide not randomly like you're about to see, but by having them collide alongst the filament, their eventual shape and their rotation is sort of predetermined. So, in other words, there's a lot of guidance that's given to these galaxies by being inside of these filaments. And here, as you can see, without guidance, they sort of turn into a kind of a blur and eventually sort of dissipate, but we get a somewhat irregular shape instead of getting a disk. And so it's really interesting to find out that there seems to be a preferred rotation, preferred orientation, and of course, a kind of a, almost like a suggested rotation for every galaxy out there that's forced upon those galaxies by the beautiful filament that we're learning so much about by studying the night skies. Now, unfortunately, we still know very little about it, and until we really discover what's going on with the whole dark matter thing, we're not going to be able to answer the question of what exactly does this filament do and how exactly was it formed? And even though all of our simulations do suggest that the filament and dark matter are a thing and it does exist, we still need to figure out what it's made out of. Until we discover more, that's really it. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, check out some of the previous videos I mentioned that do talk a little bit more about the connection and connections in the universe. And at the same time, possibly subscribe and maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.